I am sorry. I am so, so sorry. This is the worst review that I have ever made, and I know just by looking at the intro. I mean, first of all, I am dying of the common cold. I know I'm such a wimp for that, and that's not part of the script. But then I got piles of the brain by seeing the downloadable disc content intro. So allow me to explain what the hell that pandemonium was about. Essentially, it was more of a reminder to me than anyone else of how many potential episodes there could be for downloadable discontent, with all the DLC being shown there. It was supposed to be set to the tune of Papu Pommel, which is from Crash Bash. Now, what does Crash Bash have to do with um, downloadable discontent besides fuck all? Uh, fuck all. Uh, I mean, I chose that song, though, because, like, the syllables were meant to match the beats of that part of the song, which worked to a certain extent. Yeah, so, I don't think we're going to be using this intro, but hey, at least I tried. Anyway, my name is John Bond, and you're watching Downloadable This Content, where the content's large and no extra charge. And, once again, I apologise for what you are about to experience. J'adore the Saboteur, the last stand by Pandemic before being digested by Ye in some kind of parody of Vorpal. No, it doesn't show anyone in the best light. The French are wimps, the British are fetid bags of ocelot jizz, and the Irishman Sean is a sweary alcoholic who is attracted to video game women. So you could say it's pretty accurate, although the Nazis are the worst. Ignoring all the atrocities they might have done, I won't accuse them of out because I weren't in Paris at that particular time, but their fashion sense is absolutely poo-poo here. The SS shouldn't be wearing olive felt, but black as buggery uniforms and hats with skulls on them. Hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> They should look like this queer bow dressed up in 40k gear. Queer bow. Fine. That's enough of that. My original point before I got derailed, which is better than being blown up by a train killer set. Oh bloody hell! I've gone and done it again. Give your meat a good old rub. My original point was that I'm pretty sure this isn't the most accurate depiction of occupied France, otherwise there'd be sexy blokes with stain guns taking cover behind cars, not rat-faced pensioners getting shot to pieces while holding farmers' shotguns in their old ass arms. No, 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 hang on, I've still got off the rails! Lovely. My point was that there's no way anyone could do saucy dances in a strip club full of the most evil, if shockingly cool-looking fanatical soldiers the world has ever known. So why is there a DLC that makes these ladies get their tits out for these murderers? Maybe they're turned up by the skulls on their hats. Lord knows skulls are hot! Skulls for the skull throne! Why skulls, then? <laughs> Why skulls? Ignoring the arguable misogyny of other words that have their meaning debated on the internet, I must ask why this DLC is one of the most hated ever made. Sure, in the past I've said it's pointless tat, but is it really that offensive? I've never been hurt by a boob in my life. Unless it's the avian kind. Winged wankers tried to nick me chips one time. To be honest, I think it's a clever idea. A DLC that was free with new physical copies of the game and available with all digital versions. It was a big move in the war against used games. It's hardly pay to win either, nor does it play such a huge role in the story unlike other DLCs Electronic Arts Hole have done before. But it is on disc DLC, and if you got the game used you had to pony up £2.79 on the XBLA or PlayStation Live Store. Now that is a bucket of rusty spunk barnacles, no mistake. So what does the totes objectively worst DLC in the entire world offer for its price of fuck all? Besides poorly animated tits that I'll get done for showing here, little else of importance. When you're not whacking off to the burlesque, which I've never ever done before, you can earn the in-game currency of contraband through a minigame. Yes, one minigame. A minigame that has a price. Two! You have to pay 25 contraband to throw knives at a spinning wheel. You can play for small amounts of contraband, and if you're good, you can make this a sweet earner. But if you're bad, expect to write an article about the top 10 worst DLCs ever. You get five throws to blow on contraband slices of the twisty pie, or if you hit three stars, you can win a car. When you've got the shitty pimp mobile, you'll then be tasked with hitting five stars to win a jackpot of 100 contraband. And when hell freezes over, you can try driving on the ice. There's a catch though. 
Sean can't handle any more than three pints, so if it hits the beer tile, he takes a shot. When he gets too drunk, his aim falters and has a tumble from all that funny water. Not sure how he can be from the old country if he passed out just after three drinky poos. And if he's won the car and gets tipsy just by having a swig of the old Irish milk, it's not a good idea for him to be on the road. The Palomino Sedanka is a big brass beast that's so eager to blow its load that its bonnet has to be belted shut like some automotive chastity belt. Like a gigantic golden willy, it's nice to look at, but it's stiff and leaves a nasty mark the morning after you've been pounded by it. The driving in this game is only decent if you've got the Drake or Silver Claw, or fucking hell, who would have thought a half-track would make a zippy vehicle? It's faster than your average civilian car, let's put it that way, and it takes a beating like few others can without the armor good grades, but it handles poorly. A DLC like this should fix the existing vehicle problems, not add to the list of them. It wouldn't be so bad if I were cruising around in this mean machine in a multiplayer game, picking up all the guys pretending to be girls so they can gain virtual currency, but the only people seeing this ride are gormless automatons. I don't mean you, viewer, I mean the NPCs. So besides cars, cans and contraband, what does the Midnight Club actually offer? A shred of disappointment and just a reminder of how good the base game already is. It's really hard to be mad at something that does very little poorly when there's very little to begin with, and it doesn't show any potential for me to yearn for. Unless you're one of the unfortunate sods who bought it for £2.79 and can't access it on certain platforms. Forgive me if I have little sympathy, only I'm still weeping over the death of Kong Alive and Reloaded's multiplayer, which cost more than this DLC and was a far sight better. No, no, that's a rubbish argument. Scrap it in editing, you wanker. Not you, viewer. This is in the script. John, why are you filming this while reading it? Stop it. Come back to gameplay. For what it's worth, the Saboteur's Midnight Club is a merely okay add-on. It's only good very early on for grabbing a few bits of contraband, and the Golden Compensator's only okay until you're later zooming around in race cars. The few extra brothels and ladies to kiss in order to hide from a hot pursuit are welcome, but barely noticeable unless you know Paris like the back of your testicles. The only real tragedy is how this dramatically reduced the appeal of an otherwise FIST-FANTASTIC open world game. With the game being described as a swan song for industry favourites Pandemic, the Midnight Club mars the final contribution by throwing pornography at the coffin. If you're looking for a game that's expanded greatly by free content, look elsewhere. But for crude, explosive, and a bit of sneaky gameplay, the base game is well worth the purchase. Until the next time, I'm John Bond, your number one source for number two games, and I hope you're content with this episode of downloadable discontent. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to throw some powdered PlayStation 1 games into my eyes to take my mind off this cold. Or alternatively, I could just take some Strepsils.